we hear the questions all the time about what do I do if I run into a problem with where mm -hmm. mom and dad or mom mm -hmm. or dad mm -hmm. live? So you might need a little bit of help with yes. that. Today, we are bringing in Susanna Selfstead from the Senior Source in Dallas. Thanks so much for being with us today. Thanks for having me. Well, you are what's called an ombudsman. I've worked really hard to make sure I can pronounce it <laughs> and say that well. And I think that it, that can be a little bit of a confusing term where mm -hmm. you sort of think you might know what it is. What exactly is an ombudsman? Yeah, absolutely. I When I tell people I'm an ombudsman, I often just get kind of a blank stare <laughs> and on their faces. So I totally get that. Um, the Long-Term Care Ombudsman Program is a state and federally mandated program. And ombudsmen work to protect the health, safety, welfare, and rights of individuals who live in nursing homes and assisted living facilities. Mm -hmm. We do that by making regular unannounced visits. We don't tell the facilities when we're coming, um, but regular unannounced visits to each of the facilities where we go room to room, talking with the residents about their care, and then identifying and working to resolve complaints on their behalf. That's probably the first thing we need to point out is like my dad lives in independent living. Mm -hmm. That doesn't apply, but my Correct. mom's in memory care, so it would apply to her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So ombudsmen are available to assist with concerns in any licensed assisted living facility, and that can include memory care, mm -hmm. as well as nursing homes and skilled nursing facilities. Okay. Good. And what kinds of things are you potentially looking for when you're doing these unannounced tours? And when might a family come to you? Yeah, that's a great question. So we are there really to address any concern that impacts the life of residents there in the facility. And so um, when we're going out and making our visits, like I said, we're going room to room, talking with residents about their care. We're also using our own observation skills. So checking to see, are there a lot of call bells going off mm -hmm. unanswered? Um, are residents just lined up in their wheelchairs along the wall in the hallway, or are they engaged in meaningful activities? Are staff mm -hmm. interacting with them? Do we notice odors throughout the facility? Um, because that can really indicate what the care looks like mm -hmm. um, in the facility. And then talking with residents and families, and like I said, really anything that impacts their lives. So whether that's care related, medications, the food, um, improper discharges where a facility is trying to illegally evict a resident, we get involved with those mm. situations as well. Yeah. How do we know when to go to an ombudsman as opposed to just going to management or ownership or, or anybody who actually works there? Yeah, so we, you know, we definitely encourage residents and family members and work to empower them to um, work to address concerns themselves and to take those directly to the facility staff. Mm -hmm. But sometimes they may not know who the appropriate person is there at the facility. And so ombudsman also can just be a resource, a sounding board for residents and families to talk with us. And then we can help point them in the right direction of who to talk with there at the facility we encourage them to try to follow that chain of command. Maybe if it's a nursing like care is issue, talking with the director of nursing or talking with the administrator. And then if they're not getting a response, then do they need to reach out to the corporate office or depending on the severity of the issue, if it's a regulatory um, violation, then reaching out to the state regulatory agency and filing a formal complaint. That's certainly an option as well. Some residents and family members aren't comfortable voicing the complaint themselves. And, you know, there's a real fear of retaliation. And sure. so one thing I want family members to know too about our service is anything a resident or family member tells an ombudsman is confidential. Mm, we okay. must have mm -hmm. resident consent before we take any action to address mm -hmm. the concern or have any conversation mm -hmm. with the facility staff. And so it's real important to know that anything that they tell us is confidential. Um, but, you know, sometimes families, residents, they just, they need ombudsman support beyond us simply directing them who to mm -hmm. talk with. And so in those situations, if we've got consent, then the ombudsman will work to get that complaint addressed on their behalf. And a lot of times that is what we end up doing is it is the ombudsman working mm -hmm. to address the concerns. Mm -hmm. What well, what's probably the, one of the most common uh, concerns that you hear from families when they call you? Yeah, so right now, especially since COVID, it's really been complaints related to staffing mm -hmm. and facilities not having enough staff to meet the needs of the residents. And that can be reflected in the amount of time it takes for staff to respond when a resident pushes their call button for assistance. Mm -hmm. um, it can be reflected in food 
being cold by the time that it's served. Mm -hmm. You know, it just it shows itself in a lot of different ways. But I would say that's probably the number one complaint that we're getting right now is really related to staffing mm -hmm. issues. I can picture everyone who's watching the video right now saying, this is exactly what I need. How do I find it? Where, where do I go? Because some people live in the city. Some people live in the country. Does it matter where we are throughout the, the USA? Can we get one anywhere? Absolutely. So the long-term care ombudsman program is both state and federally mandated. And so that means every nursing home, every assisted living facility in the country is served by an ombudsman program. Probably the easiest way to find your local ombudsman is to reach out to your local area agency on aging. Um, here in Texas, there are 28 area agencies on aging and most of the ombudsman programs are housed within that organization. Uh, my program here in Dallas County is subcontracted out to a local nonprofit, but easiest way would be to reach out to the area agency on aging. And that would be anywhere in the country. Just call your area on right. agency, area mm -hmm. agency on aging in your area and find mm -hmm. out. Yeah. And if the ombudsman program isn't housed within their organization, they, mm -hmm. they'll be able to get them directed to the right place. Mm -hmm. And there's also a component of uh, being able to get information about long-term care facilities mm -hmm. if you are looking for your parent to go to one. Yeah, absolutely. So not only are we in facilities working to address complaints, we also are a resource for people in the community who are going through that overwhelming process of choosing a facility for a loved one. Ombudsman can't recommend facilities, but we can help narrow the list of options based on someone's needs. So mom has dementia and is wandering and needs a secured memory care facility. We can narrow it that way. If they're looking in a certain geographic area, we'll narrow it based on that. And so we'll narrow that list of options and then we can provide information to guide them through that process, questions to ask, things to be looking at, observations to be making as they're touring facilities. Mm -hmm. And then as they're narrowing their list of facilities, we can get them connected with the ombudsman who's assigned to each of those facilities and the ombudsman will be able to provide information about common complaints that we address at those homes. We can also help them access the state's most recent licensing inspection and help interpret information about any deficiencies they may have received. So I, you just mentioned something that's really interesting. So each ombudsman is assigned certain communities. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's correct. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. And so every, again, every nursing home, every assisted living facility is served by an ombudsman and we do have paid staff ombudsman. And then we also have certified volunteer ombudsman who help us in these efforts and our volunteers complete the same certification training that we do as staff and serve in the same role. Hmm. Interesting. Do we ever have to worry about not enough ombudsman to go around to where I, I call because I've got a complaint mm -hmm. and it's like, well, we can get to you in December. <laughs> Oh, hopefully, uh, I de definitely not here in Dallas County. I mean, we definitely work to get response when we get those calls in. Is there a need for more ombudsmen? Yeah. Always. We always are looking for more volunteers to help us in our efforts just because the need is huge and it's only continuing to grow mm -hmm. as baby boomers are reaching retirement age. We know there are going to be more individuals that need our services, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. definitely if somebody reaches out to our program, you will get a response and we will work to help get the complaint addressed. Interesting. Right. So good to know that an ombudsman can help to sort of guide and provide mm -hmm. resources or sort of go in and, and do the the investigating, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, uh, for the family. Yeah. And I love yeah. the fact that it's an independent, impartial opinion. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. So I get that question a lot when I'm out in my facilities making visits. Residents will ask where my office is there at the facility. And so I have to let them know I, I'm completely independent. Yeah. From the facility, I don't work for anyone other than the resident. We are a resident directed program. And so we're going to follow what the wishes of the residents are in terms of any actions that we'll take. And just since there likely are people watching who may have a parent in an independent living type community, that is important for people to know that that's not considered a long term care community. So that would not fall under the ombudsman, but it's correct. more like being a tenant in an apartment. Yes, that's correct. Okay, so a tenant association or something like that would be where you'd go potentially for uh, concerns in an independent living type. Yeah, community. it's a little bit different. Yeah. Okay, what yeah. what what about what what about I guess the ones that are the continued care communities where you mm -hmm. have independent living but also have potentially assisted memory or assisting? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So those continuing care retirement communities they they offer all the different levels of care, mm -hmm. like yeah. you said, from independent living, assisted living, memory care, and skilled nursing. And so we ombudsmen are available to provide our services for everything except for that independent oh, okay. piece. So any other level of care, then we're there as a, a resource and we're making visits to those 
parts of the facility. Good to know. That's great. Good to know. Yeah. Well, you've cleared up a lot of confusion and, and I think you're definitely going to help a lot of people because of this. Thank you so much. Oh, well, thank you again. And um, we're here to help and happy to any way we can. Thank you. Thank you. It, it, great to know that there's a resource. If you just need to bounce some ideas off, you're not sure who to talk to, mm -hmm. you know, what might be the process that I go to, or if I'm scared, can you do it for me? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, just having someone who could be on your side. Always good to know. If there's any topic you'd like us to discuss, please let us know. Parenting, aging, parents.